Welcome to Spotlight Rewind, where we rewind and replay some of the athlete spotlight features that have aired on Sports Central. Now, in this episode of Spotlight Rewind, we're featuring Michael Brown, who was a swimmer at Kathleen High School. Michael specialized in the very difficult yet beautiful butterfly stroke. We'll talk with his coach, Kat Buckman, and find out how Michael is doing. And we'll feature an up-and-coming star, Seth Roberts. Seth is a young man who will be a freshman in high school this fall, yet he's already making a name for himself in the world of rodeo. So join us as we rewind, replay, and update you on where these athletes are now. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Moore, and this is Spotlight Rewind, where we highlight some of the top student athletes throughout Polk County. Now, if you've ever seen the show Sports Central, there's a good chance you've seen our athlete features, where our spotlight shines on some of Polk County's best students, both on and off the playing field. These athletes may or may not be the star of their team, but they're all stars off the playing field in the classroom and in their communities. Now on this show, we're gonna focus on two athletes from two sports that don't get a lot of attention. A little later, we're going to get back in the saddle with Seth Roberts, a young man who's making big strides in the sport of rodeo and tie down. In just a few minutes, Seth and his dad, Chip, will join me in the studio and they'll give us an update. But let's begin with Michael Brown's story, which takes place in the pool. Michael is a leader both in and out of the water and sometimes even in the sky. Michael swim coach Kat Buckman will join us shortly. But first, let's rewind and replay our athlete spotlight on Michael Brown. Okay, anytime you do a 25, it's on 40. Anytime you do a 50, it's on a minute. Anytime you do a 100, it's on 145. Everybody get it? Got it. All right, go ahead and get behind your lines and let's get started. I've always enjoyed swimming. There's a local pool in my neighborhood and um, I've always liked to go and you know just swim, have fun. And so I joined the swim team and I just fell in love with it. It was a lot of fun. I love to push myself and it was a great way to do that. It was a great way to test myself. I swim the 200 medley relay, the 100 butterfly, the 50 freestyle and the 200 free relay. Go. Go. They all require mental discipline of a, an extreme status, especially the, sh the butterfly stroke. Despite how challenging it is, how difficult it is, there's something that feels very natural about it. It's one of the most physically demanding activities I think there is out of all humankind, anything anyone in body's ever done. But there's a certain natural feel to it and there's a certain pride you have being part of the few swimmers who actually can compete in the butterfly. He puts in the work every day. He works twice as hard as anybody else. I mean, he's always just motivated, he's always pumped, he pushes every single lap. To be a captain, to be a leader, you have to be a bigger person than that. You have to rally the team up. You have to be more motivated. You have to be a figure that they can look up to. He creates this sense of uh, team unity and morale. He pushes people like if he's hurting, he knows that the guy next to me, they're struggling. So he'll be there on deck just saying, you can do it, you can do it one more, two more, you know, which creates a sense of, you know, just camaraderie amongst the swimmers. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy, some of my goals that I have for this year in swimming include drop at least a few more seconds on my 100 fly. It's pretty challenging, but I feel that I can do it, and I feel that if I do accomplish these goals, I'll be very proud of myself in the future years as I look back on my high school career. Much better, much better. I am a private pilot. Uh, I got my license on May 26, 2014. It took a lot of work. Uh, but flying is something I love doing. Outside of swimming, flying is one of the most fun things I can ever do. I've got a great coach, I've got a uh, great team. 
I'm, I'm very proud of what I've been able to do, what I've been able to accomplish. I'm Michael Brown, captain of the Kathleen Swim Team. And there he goes, swimming again, the coach there, making him work hard. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That was so exciting. Kat Buckman is here. She is the head coach there with Kathleen. And uh, it's, it's interesting that when we look at the story, you're, you have so many emotions, most of them happy. You miss these people already, don't you? I do. It's so sad, like when you see, especially my seniors, you know, you spend three, four years with them. And then when they graduate, it's like a piece of your heart, you know, but you know, you never know like what kinds of freshmen you're going to get either. So sort of the season ends and you're sad, but at the same time, you, you know, last year we had a couple of freshmen walk in and they were all stars this year. So it's always exciting. Well, I want to get into all the details about Michael, where he's been, where he's going. In fact, there's some news for you where you're going and yes. we'll talk about swimming. But uh, the shot we saw at the very end of his story there was underwater and we had one of your uh, swimmers kind of help us yes, take some video it. here. Yeah, yes. and he did, a, he took, I want to show this video here because I, I didn't show it in the story here, but we can take a look at this and you're going to see how he took a, a I guess a sub. Here it is right here. You can, I, oh. I was wanting to get the shot of the team and all of a sudden he couldn't resist. He had to turn the camera around. Oh no, who is it? And who is it? See if you know who oh, it is. Oh, that's Hans. That's Hans. <laughs> so good old Hans. Oh, hi Hans. And uh, you know, I Oh, had to, that's so cute. But I couldn't, I didn't show that in the story. I had to yeah. slow it down. But, uh, <laughs> but Hans did a great job with the underwater camera there. That I was, was prepared. Awesome cat to go in the water yes but i probably would have drowned so it's probably a good thing that hans came there to save the day awesome. kids in their selfies i'm telling you they, they love that kind of stuff absolutely let's, absolutely let's talk about michael he's obviously it was the spotlight he was a senior and he, he really was an important part of your team wasn't he oh absolutely he works hard every day uh, i think he came into swimming sort of oh guess i'll try swimming today and see how it goes and i think a couple of the other his friends encouraged him to join the swim team and I mean, it took off. When you're a hard worker like that and you're smart and you're capable and you put in the effort, you know, it shows proof like how well you can do throughout the season. Yeah, well, one of the events that he swims is the fly, the butterfly, which yeah. has to be the most difficult uh, stroke you can do. I'm telling you, if people try the butterfly, it, they can't, they, I can do it maybe one stroke. <laughs> and for, to see these kids do this, and we have, I wanna show you some video here of him doing the butterfly. I don't understand how people do it. I was on a swim team and I could not oh, there do he it. Is. I mean, how it's difficult, and he makes it so effortlessly. You know, it's funny is when I look at him swimming, I'm constantly wanting to coach him still, you know, and like, <laughs> Michael, get your head down, you know. But when you take a step back and you look at his technique, like right now, I mean, it's, it's almost perfect. You know, every swimmer, you know, when you get to a certain level, it's just kind of like fine tuning. Fine tuning, You right. know, and, um, but it, a doing butterfly takes some serious upper body strength. I mean, you essentially have to lift yourself out of the water. Um, a lot of people struggle with butterfly because of the timing, you know, just like breaststroke and just like butterfly, it's all about your timing. Um, and sort of once you get everything situated, it's a lot easier. Um, but swimmers like Michael make it look really easy. You know, you mentioned technique. Swimming is really all about technique, isn't it? Absolutely. It's mostly a combination of endurance and technique. You know, once you're fine tuning, it's then you train that way, but you have to train you know, the right way. You have to train using your technique or else you're not really going to get better and, you know, more precise at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we saw in the story some photos of him with a, a plane and he talks about his pilot's license. Yeah. I want to give you, I didn't really get a chance to get too much in depth in the story, but there at Kathleen High School, you have a program there for aeronautical and flying and tell me about that. Yes. Um, so Kathleen High School has an academy called the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. Um, it's located right off uh, Sun and Fun or like the Lakeland Airport. Mm -hmm. um, we have about 300 students, um, some of which are there for engineering. Some of them are there for, you know, aerospace and some uh, enjoy like avionics and A&P, you know, with the uh, mechanical aspects of it. Um, but they're, they get the opportunity to take electives. So rather than taking you know, electives that you would have at like a, a public school, you know, like art and music, they have the opportunity to take specific electives, um, but then also enjoy some of the things that main campus has, like sports and, you know, they can participate in band. We have a lot of kids that do band at our school as well. Um, so they train there and every year, which is really fun, um, our whole school goes out for sun and fun, which is a right. week. Sure. And they're all out of school, which they love. And um, <laughs> they volunteer, they work with, you know, local community, um, 
you know, uh, organizations that have, you know, um, tents and booths that sound and fun and they volunteer there. Um, and they really enjoy that, you know. That really is a, a neat and unique opportunity for kids in high school. And, and like you said, some of your students ha have their pilot's license and uh, <laughs> got them even before their driver's license. It's yeah. kind of interesting. It's terrifying. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, when you're looking at kids in class, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they fly planes, you know. But, um, but it's awesome. They, they love it. And the kids that do get their pilot's license, um, I had a few kids this year finish up their pilot's license, so you get, you're so proud of them. I mean, they work hard, you know, as much as it takes to get their pilot's license, once they get it, you're like, all right, yeah. you know, you, you did everything you need to do, and um, a lot of them work, you know, at Sun and Fun and work for Tail Wheels and volunteer, and um, some of them restore old planes, and they just, they love it there. That's great, yeah, it's don't nice. text and drive, they don't text and fly. Absolutely, so. you know, sometimes you'll see their little selfies while they're flying, you're like, oh God, you know, no, put no. it down. They, they can't help these selfies, it's something that is, it's addictive. Yeah. I wanna get back to the swimming, because yes. you're a coach, you were a coach, but you're leaving uh, Kathleen, and uh, you're not leaving swimming, you're gonna always have that in your life, but you're not gonna be involved with Coach, tell me where you're going or what's going on. Right, well, I'm transferring to Hillsborough County. I'm moving uh, towards Tampa, like North Tampa. So I am going to be at Wharton High School next year. So I'm very excited about that. Very sad to leave, you know, Kathleen High School. I've been there for three years. Um, so much has changed in three years. You know, I had the opportunity to coach for two of them. Um, and at the Aerospace Academy, you know, we it's very small. So a lot of the times what happens is, you know, I teach the kids biology and then the next year I'll teach the same kids chemistry and then the following year I'll teach the same kids AP biology so well, you get to know them I mean oh my goodness I've had Michael you know Michael in mm -hmm. my class for three years in a row I've had a bunch of other kids like that and you know when they graduate it's like oh you know you're just so you know you're used to having them there every day and they're used to the way you teach and you're used to the way they learn and we don't have a lot of time left. I, we have some more video here. I hope I don't, they're not gonna be able to, to tell, but if you see this video, you had a unique setup with your workouts. Oh yes. Now, for people from Polk County, they know Lakeland and Kathleen. They're best of friends, right? <laughs> no, they're huge rivals, right? They're huge rivals. Yeah. And yet your workouts are literally at the same time, at the same pool. Yes. In, in these shots I have in these swimming, you can see, I didn't know, but I just thought they were your swimmers, but. Kathleen and Lakeland, you're swimming there at the same time. I mean, I guess yes. at the top of the screen, that's Lakeland, correct? Correct, that's Coach Lee and Coach Bud on deck. And um, so we would have usually like the first three or four lanes, uh, and then Lakeland would have the next four lanes. And um, well, no I mean- No drownings? No, no, no drownings. Fight. Everything <laughs> was know, cool? Absolutely. And um, you know, it's funny because swimming is such a small community right. that, you know, coaches know each other, swimmers know each other. and. Uh, Actually, like we learned more about the Lakeland swimmers every day, you know, when it would rain and when, you know, swimming would be sort of like canceled. N no coach wants to say, okay, kids, go home, you know. So what we do is we would go in the rec center and we'd have a dry land workout all together. And sometimes on Friday, you know, we'd be there with like Gibson as well. So <laughs> Coach Lee and I worked closely together and he's a great coach. Swimming and is more, it's a community too. I absolutely. mean, no matter what school you go to, the swimmers do certainly have that absolutely. certain a bond. You can always root for each other. Right, exactly. You know? Well, unfortunately, the time goes by very quickly. Uh, at Kathleen, was as, as a coach, yeah. for Michael as a student, I guess he's going to USF, but uh, life continues on. So absolutely. we certainly wish you the best there at Thank Wharton. You. Wish Michael the very best well, as well at, uh, at USF. And I appreciate you letting me to come out there that thank day. Thank you and, for having me. Me. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Cat, thank you so much. Thank Cat you. is proof that cats do like water sometimes. So <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's Kat, funny. Thank you. Thank you very much. This was fun. Straight ahead on Spotlight Rewind, we're going from the pool to the rodeo arena. Once again, we're shining our spotlight on Seth Roberts. Stay with us. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day. I could be a stadium. And welcome back to Spotlight Rewind. I'm Mike Moore. Thanks for joining us here today. Now, when you think of high school athletes we feature usually here on the show, they involve the sport of football, basketball, baseball, swimming, soccer, wrestling, and a few more. But from time to time, we feature an athlete whose sport isn't part of the high school athletic experience, such as the case for Seth Roberts, a young rodeo star. His specialty is roping, breakaway, tie down, and shoot dogging. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, stay with us, you'll see. But for Seth, rodeo 
It's much more than a sport, it's a lifestyle. Seth is a cowboy and it shows in everything he does. So let's rewind and replay our athlete spotlight on Seth Roberts. All right, your first junior breakaway will be Seth Roberts. About three years ago, he just came to us and started expressing an interest in wearing Western clothing, uh, jeans, Wrangler jeans, Western shirts, felt black hats, and then the rest is history. At the breakaway, your calf runs out, you rope them, and your, your uh, rope's tied onto your saddle horn so it breaks off, and that's how you get timed. You tie down, your rope's tied on, you rope your calf, you run down to him, you gotta flank him and tie him, and that's how you get your time. It's really hard, you gotta, it, you don't get a whole lot of good shots where you can go ahead and take it, but when you do, you gotta go ahead and throw them. Always have a rope, always roping something, roping a dummy. Sometimes you miss. You, you have to hold up with your spoke. Your spoke's from your hand. Your elbow has touched the knot of that Honda. And that's just like your handle. I rope every day the dummy. And then two, three times a week, I'll go over to people's houses and rope calves and rope steers. This is just groundwork. You know, we've got a 19-year-old boy that played baseball his whole life, and we thought just naturally Seth would grow up playing baseball. Uh, we had him enrolled in baseball. We had him enrolled in football, taekwondo. Nothing ever worked out. T-ball, football, all that stuff, just never really enjoyed it. Shoot dog, and you're in a, you're in a bucking shoot with a steer and you gotta shape them, which you get, you put the right horn in your, um, in your elbow right there, and you grab the left horn with your hand, and you nod, your steer comes out, you have to walk him to a line, and then as soon as you get past that line, you've gotta mug him and throw him. He's gotta roll over on all four feet, and gotta point out one direction. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a strong steer. He had me by surprise. It's hard because me being a little under 100 pounds and that steer's 400 pounds, you gotta, you gotta be on top of him. I roped my calf and tied him down all year faster than anybody. So I had, I had the most points out of anybody and won. I wanna grow up and train horses and hope to make it to the NFR. That's the National Finals Rodeo. That's where all the big time ropers and everyone in the rodeo, the big shots, that's where they go. Danny McClellan, Mike Matthews, they've helped me a lot. And um, a professional guy is Tough Cooper. He's a real good calf roper. He just never misses. He's practicing every day. Seth has a tremendous work ethic you know, for his age. I've never seen anything quite like it. He gets out here and rides, and, and yeah, we, sometimes we have to make him come home, or come inside, rather. <laughs> With the horse? With the, well, he's tried once. Walking through the house one day, I look on the back patio, and I see him on the patio with the horse. Let the door open, the horse walks up in there. I tried to walk him in. You know, the horse's head sticking in, in, in through the hallway. And he said no. And of course, I had to tell him no. Welcome to the studio. This is Seth Roberts and his dad, Chip. And it's great to have you here. And it's almost been a year since uh, I was at your house and at that rodeo and got a chance to, to get that video view. He has grown a little bit, Chip. I think he has, yeah. He's, a year's made a lot of difference in his height. You were in middle school, and now you're getting ready to go into to ninth grade or freshman. So uh, I know you're probably not excited about school, but uh, summertime's got to be a great time of year for you in terms of all this, because no school, you can just go out there and and be with the horses. Yes, sir, you can rope every day. You like to rope. And I, I got to ask you about the, you know, we saw you there and uh, roping there, uh, and the, the dummy, but you, how much time really 
do you spend roping every single day? Uh, two to three hours. Two to three hours every day? Yes, sir. And that's not even on the horse or anything else? No, sir, that's just a dummy right on the ground. Wow. How long have you been doing this now? Uh, three years. Three I years, think. yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I, and I, I do, we do have some sad news here, and I want to kind of get some of the sad news out of the way, but uh, one, the horse we saw you there with, not the one you were riding, but there at, at your house, Miss Kay? Yes, sir. Now, tell me about Miss Kay. Uh, she was a horse that my aunt gave me, and I trained her and made her a calf horse, and she just recently broke her leg. We had to put her down. Mm. So that was just been, what, a few weeks, I guess, Chip? Mm, it's been about three weeks about now. three weeks. Mm -hmm. How, that's got to be tough. I mean, a horse is, um, your, it's your horse, your animal, your pet, but almost a friend, I guess, right? Yes, sir. It's family. Yes, sir. It's like somebody with a dog or whatever. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, you did try to bring, I don't know if it was Miss Kay, but you tried to bring one horse into the house. <laughs> yes, Has sir. he tried to do that again, Chip? Uh, I don't think he's tried to bring one into the home, but uh, they, they get up on the porch quite often. He, he certainly <laughs> rides up on the patio often. Let me ask you, speaking of your home, uh, if you saw the story, you got a chance to kind of, I don't make sure they really understood. Uh, a few years ago, you were, weren't living where you live now. I mean, I'll let you kind of tell the story. You were living like in a regular, I call it a regular community where you can't have horses. This has been a huge lifestyle change. Tell me about that. Well, we lived in a deed restricted, gated community, um, had a community pool. Um, you know, they were very strict on the regulations for the homeowners that lived in there. And we saw uh, Seth, his progressing from different sports that we've tried to uh, put him in to get him involved in different activities. And like I said in the previous video, he, nothing, he never took to any of those. But uh, with rodeo, uh, you know, he took to it and he's excelled at it. So we needed to, we needed to move and we needed to find some land and uh, let him have his dream. It's actually kind of worked out for everyone. I mean, I don't know where you lived before, but where you live now, that's, you, ha you must love where you live now. It's private, you get all this land, you can ride your, yes, sir. some of those shots you've seen through the woods, you were so far away. I mean, yes, sir. you got a lot of room there. You like yes, that, don't you? Yes, sir. You're way up there in North Polk County. That's we, I guess Polk City Polk is that City, yes, kind sir. of Polk City mm -hmm. in that area. Um, now I want to ask you about some of the things that you do. You told us already that you spend three hours a day uh, rope and just roping the dummy, spending using that time of the rope. But some of the things that you also do, we got a chance to see you do. It's called the, the tie down, the tie down the, and the breakaway. Explain what those two are and how that works. Well, break is they're both calf roping. Okay. Tie down, you're uh, you have to rope and tie a calf. The breakaway, you just rope him. Okay, that's where he sh goes out to shoot and. And you just chase after him, try to rope him. Yes, sir. And the one that I think has got to be, they're all difficult, but the one I think has got to be tough is, the, I guess, called shoot dogging. Yes, sir. And uh, we got a chance to see in your, in your story some of these guys shoot dogging. Now, this is something more recent, and this is one, look at all the mud. What's, what's going on? Where was this, Seth? This is at Cumbie. It just rained. In oh, okay. Arena. It was just underwater. <laughs> yeah, I'd say underwater. And uh, you're slowly working it back. So tell me the process here. What's happening here? Uh, you're in a shoot with a steer about 400 pounds and whenever you nod they open it and there's a line 10 feet out and you have to you can't touch steer's horns so you get to that line and when you get to the line you can grab the horns and throw him and, and you got to, like order, right there yeah right? in order to get a time off four feet you have to be sticking out <sighs> one side how tough is that because you kind of mentioned you know here's a 400 pound animal and you're maybe just under 100 pounds, maybe now 100 pounds, but the, yes, sir. that's a big animal, no matter, uh, have, you, have you tried this, Jim? No, sir. <laughs> you don't want to try it either, <laughs> do you? I'm okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll cheer him on. <laughs> it, it, what, of all the ones that you do, the shoot dogging and the, the breakaway and the tie down, uh, uh, what, what is your favorite? Team roping. Team roping, now explain that, how does that work? It's, uh, it's a steer like that and the shoot dogging, mm -hmm. and you've got a header and a healer. One guy ropes the horns and turns them left, and the healer ropes with two back feet. Now why do you like that? Because I guess you really have to work together, don't you? He's yes, doing sir. one job, you got to do the other. Yes, sir. Yeah, why do you like to, do you have a guy that you often do this with? Yeah, Lane Grubbs. Okay, now I, I saw you do this, I think, when I was at that rodeo event. I don't know if, it was, if this was uh, the gentleman you're talking about. Is he a young guy like you? Or yes, he... yes, sir. Do you, you know, it's funny, Chip, when you think about how young he is, uh, the places like the youth uh, rodeo associations, they give you an opportunity because there is a future here, uh, obviously, which is what he's working towards, uh, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, you know, these organizations are great for kids. Um, 
you know, of course, you know, the parents have to be involved and they've got a tremendous support group there. But um, there are colleges out west that uh, offer scholarships, you know, for college inbound kids that uh, compete in these events. Wow. Is that something you would like to do? I mean, yes, I know sir. eventually, not whether it's college or you think you want to get on the pro circuit, I guess. You kind of mentioned that earlier. Yes, sir. Get what on the, uh, you know, just go to the PRCA, make the NFR. You know, what's interesting, one of the gentlemen that you mentioned, um, Tough Cooper, one of the guys, we, we were trying desperately to see if we could get him to join us by, uh, by Skype or phone. We weren't able to get a hold of him. But uh, he's a young guy himself in his early 20s so yes, sir. you know you really have to get, get kind of started like this don't you when you're, yes, you you can't wait till you're 30 and then get into it well there is older guys that do it like cody old but tough's one of the youngest guys on the circuit okay you know it's interesting tough not to, if you don't know him his family it comes from a rodeo background yeah. but this is not your background is it you you don't come from horses you don't you don't do this so he's not like watching you and learning from you absolutely not we uh, my background was baseball um, you know, my oldest son, you know, had a scholarship to play in South Carolina. Um, this is just something that he saw and he wanted to do. And, you know, of course, we gave my oldest son every opportunity to play baseball. So we thought it was fair to do the same for him. Yeah. And so now we live on, you know, this land. We have horses, uh, cow trailers, you know, uh, horse trailers, trucks. So <laughs> you know, we've quite a little money invested in this. And do you, are you on the road quite a bit, especially in the summer, going to yes, events? Sir. like Going like, to ropings and rodeos everywhere, yes, not, sir. All over, not just uh, this Polk County, but all over Florida? Yes, sir, all over Florida. Wow. Do you, do you ever go outside of Florida yet? or? Yes, sir. Okay. I've been to Georgia to ropings and stuff. Well, that, that's so much fun. And you have been very successful. They, they, have, they give you a lot of awards. There. Obviously, they're not giving you, I guess, cash prizes, but you win saddles, you win buckles. We've got some pictures of all that. Uh, which, is there anyone out there of these saddles or buckles that you have that you're most proud of? No, just, just everything says champion. And I also hear summertime is a time when a lot of kids have summer jobs. You do, too, but you're not working at uh, the local burger joint. Tell me what you're doing this summer to make some money. Uh, they work and catch cows. Catch cows? Now, what does that mean, catch cows? Uh, people call us out and, uh, like, they have cows out and they need cows worked. We'll go and bunch all the cows, or if cows get out on the road or something, we'll go out there and rope them and put them back where they need to be. You enjoy that then, don't you? Yes, sir. And then you actually get paid for that, right? Yes, sir. That's not too bad. That's, that's, a, that's a good thing. I mentioned that you're going to be a freshman and you're going to be going to, uh, George Jenkins. Yes, sir. We, we gave him the opportunity to go to the district school that he's in, or Jenkins, and they have a vet uh, academy, so, uh, and they have a good FFA program or an ag program, so, uh, you know, that's the route we're going to take. I want a ranch. You want a ranch? Yes, sir. It, can you do that around here still, yes, I guess? Sir. So, yes, sir. He brought it to my attention that Florida was the largest um, cattle ranch really? in the country. Wow, I, I would have guessed Texas. Yeah, people don't think Florida's much into that, but it's a lot more than you think. Well, and you're going to be a part of it, aren't you? Yes, sir. That's awesome. You feel like you're the grizzled old veteran out there at, you know, <laughs> at, at about, what, 15 or 16, I guess? Mm -hmm. Do you have your driver's license yet? No, sir. Not yet. Okay. But he does know how to ride his horse all around. And if you have a cow that's loose, call Seth. Call He'll be glad to, <laughs> that's right. to come get it back in the corral for you. Well, Seth, thank you so much. I wish you the very best. And uh, continued success with all your champion buckles and, and uh, saddles. And uh, Chip, thank you as well. I appreciate it. I know you're, you're a busy father, but it's, it's changed your life. But it sounds like it's changed things in a positive way. It has. It's, it's been a joy watching him grow, you know, with this sport. Obviously, you know, he's getting taller. And he's, uh, it, it's one of the great things that I do is watch him compete in these sports. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, everyone's getting taller except me, but that's, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Well, thank you so much for joining us as well for another edition of Spotlight Rewind. I enjoy so much not only going out and meeting these kids, but also their families and coaches, but bringing these stories to you. These are some of the top kids from around Polk County who are excelling athletically, but also off the fields as well in their homes and their communities. Again, thanks for watching us, and we will catch you next time for another edition of Spotlight Rewind. Take care, everyone.